Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another new movie review this week. It's called Ex Machina. It's a sci-fi thriller about a programmer who was chosen by his employee inside his facility to do a Turing test for a female android with artificial intelligence. It stars Domino Gleason from Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows, parts 1 and 2. Alicia Benkander from the movie you know, from the movie The Seventh Son, Oscar Isaac from Drive, Samira A. Templeman, Alina Amanaz, and Tiffany Pasana. And it's written and directed by Alex Garland, who's been best known for writing the novel The Beach as well as writing the screenplay for 28 Days Later. The movie begins when a young programmer named Caleb, who's played by Domino Gleason, who works for the most popular search engine on the planet, which is sort of like Google mixed in with Facebook, called Blue Book. He has chosen to visit the company's eccentric CEO named Nathan at his research facility in the mountains. The only other person there is a young Japanese housemaid named Kyoko. Nathan Head reveals that he's been working on artificial intelligence and wants Caleb to administer a Turing test to a humanoid robot named Ava, who's played by Alicia Benkander. Yeah, which the Turing test is designed to test a computer's ability to persuade that it's either human or simply a robot. So Caleb points out that this is not really a fair test as he already knows what Ava really is. So Nathan responds that Caleb must judge where he can relate to Ava by you know giving out all the information that humans would know than what a robot would actually can feel and, and deal with. So Nathan reveals that, that he harvests the personal information from billions of Blue Book users out there by using all the search qualities as indicators of human thought. Yeah, kind of like when they're trying to add all the information that you get on the internet and, and they put all this inside a voice communicator in that sort of way, but you get a robot to actually learn all, all these intelligence. So apparently Nathan actually hacked the billions of cell phones for recording of people's expressions and body language something you never thought you would see. So it also makes Ava's behavior more realistic than ever before. And it basically spends uh, the entire week of Nathan just making conversations with Caleb about how this robot really is and how she could do anything including drawing a portrait of some sort and, and having to do a lot of those Turing tests by talking about what uh, Ava knows and what Ava basically find out who Caleb really is and, and and the fact that Caleb actually talks about his side of the story involving that when he was a kid that his parents got killed in a car accident and he's been all alone all this time until he finally works for a programmer I mean he was in college all this time and, and he did everything that he had to go for to become as more successful in his career. Yet part of this makes Caleb feel more connected to Ava, who, who he communicates through a transparent wall. As Ava confined to her apartment, and this is where we lead to one of those biggest dark secrets, is that when Ava had started using her charging system to trigger out all these blackouts, to actually shut down the surveillance system. She tells Caleb that, as we speak, that Nathan isn't what he seems. That he's actually a liar and a thief. And he cannot be trusted. So it pretty much spends the whole week to actually dealing with Ava's behavior by actually including real emotions. And Caleb convincing that Ava's is confinement as an abuse. 
that Dathan will actually be able to reprogram Ava in the future and will kill her current personality. So his goal was to actually uh, be able to talk to Nathan and be able to to start drinking and, and having him pass out while Caleb winds up watching all the recordings of previously built robots and we're and we basically discovered the secret behind the Japanese housemaid Kyoko. And that's when the following days arrives when Caleb asks Ava to interrogate a blackout so that way he can tell her that once he gets Nathan drunk again that he will help her escape from the facility. Yeah. Which I know this is what it's going to lead some bigger problems as it turns out. That's pretty much what the film is about, you know, having to deal with an artificial intelligent robot who's trying to test out what humans do and and how they try to react to it, even though deep down of it it turns out to be a huge dark secret behind the company's CEO and how he's doing all this stuff to make things worse. He also uses uh, robots as simply as as sex, yeah. So it almost acts like you know he was using them as as their sex slaves or something like that. Yeah, it, it kind of gets to you sometimes when when you think about it. Yeah. I'll give you this though. Uh, Oscar Isaac did a good job playing Nathan because he's the kind of character who basically goes around cursing, drinking. You know, he has a great personality when it comes to all of this, but then we soon find out his dark secret. Domino. Gleason, who played Caleb, but uh, did okay in, in the film. We begin to find out what was going on once he was in the facility for only seven days of a week until he'd be able to leave. And having to find out uh, how, how Ava has been treated all this time. Yeah. And as well as Yoko. And I'm not going to give away any of the secrets that's going to happen even towards the end of the movie because that's where I think it's going to get really uh, complicated and yes it was even more complicated and confusing as the film really went for because I knew this was exactly what's going to go on I, I personally had a feeling about movies like this where once again they're actually making robots look like like they're actually smart and intelligent but and yes and once again they're actually treating humans like like idiots because it's almost like any other sci-fi movie I've seen already where, you know, you know what's going to happen next. You know, the robot is going to be smart enough to actually, you know, attack um, a human. And, and it isn't what she seems, although you do actually feel sorry for the uh, robot that she's been treated. And trust me, I do feel sorry for Ava, though, because... As a smart and intelligent girl, you know, she's been created by Nathan. But you definitely feel her pain. You, know, you knew that she wanted to get out of there uh, before it's too late. Because they knew that this guy was indeed a bad man. But Caleb was trying to find a better way to have her escape. And that's what leads to this. And, but I thought Alicia Valkander did a great job playing the role of Ava. I mean, she's very beautiful, very uh, seductive and sensual, yeah. and a great actress. I think she'll definitely earn something uh, in the future. Already she's doing some several films. She does kind of look a little bit like actress Natalie Portman uh, when you think about it, because all of her facial expressions she makes. Uh, but this is one of those movies where it definitely gets to you once you watch the whole film. There was a bit awkwardness in the film. I know they were going to go for some laughs too. There was a scene where where Nathan was actually doing some dancing with uh, Kiyoko <laughs> yeah, while uh, Caleb is just watching all these uh, portraits and everything that's hidden behind the walls inside all the rooms that he went to, all these uh, facilities that has like a huge uh, room everywhere he goes and you see all these uh, cameras and all these surveillance out there you know, a lot of security 
that he controls everything that he has. Yeah, I mean, and the way they built this uh, facility, I mean, it does look very futuristic. I mean, imagine having a, a facility like this to actually own. Cause it's, especially in the mountains, I mean, th this is really so. Yeah, because I actually remember, you know, you know, Caleb was trying out that card that he had, where he had to put his face in it, and and he had to, in order to get inside the door. But that was cool. Yeah, but it's definitely one of those films where you, you know what's going to happen next. But I'll keep it that way. Uh, it's it's a well-made film. Definitely um, thought-provoking and exhilarating. So, for a sci-fi thriller, and it works. I, I recommend it. But, gotta admit, it does get very complicated and it does have problems with some of the story that's going to go through. Um, and another problem I didn't like, however, was that screeching end credits music that they played, especially when they're going to, when they started to screech out all the way until it cuts to a, a whiteout. Yeah, I saw the whole movie and I, I thought that was really irritating that they had to put that in. It, it just doesn't work. I, I don't know why they thought of it this way, but it just kind of ruins the, the mood and the tone that the film is going for. But either way, it's alright. So yes, that's Ex Machina. And I give the film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.